It's cold and wet. And I am prepared to go. This is one of the first things I always do when I come here. So I lay out my my camera gear on this little platform in at this time of year. In the winter I have my propane stove here that's connected to a 30 liter tank right on the outside of the tent. I drilled a hole through the tent and I just run the hose through. And that system is is a beauty, I tell you. I love it. Okay, I'm going to start with the coffee, like I always do, and then I'm going to do a couple of couple of jobs. I got a couple of jobs to do around here today. It's um, midday on a Saturday right now. I've got about four hours of daylight left, so still pretty good. And then it's going to get dark, and then I'll probably keep busy throughout the evening as well. And I'm going to spend the whole day here tomorrow. So yeah, it's two days, two day trip, and there's a very good chance this will be the last one I'll have until the lake is frozen over and safe enough for me to snowmobile. So the last time I was here, I jacked up the tent and I leveled it. And uh, here's the wedge that I drove into the, in the bottom there. And I raised the tent, I would say about half an inch. But someone commented, this is great. Yeah, you've got a wedge in there. And I actually right here in the front, I drove some wood in there and it's really tight now. Someone said, look, if you got any gaps anywhere, I got a little piece there too. Put as much wood in the gaps as possible because this is really gonna to start to settle. And I don't know how much weight this, uh, this wedge can take in the end. There's a lot of pressure on that wedge. So I'm gonna drive wood in all these sections here as much as possible, just so that way the weight of the tent is more evenly distributed. Okay, so what I'm about to do next is another idea that I got in the comment section. So as you can see here, there's a little gap between the door and the wall. 
Same happens here, but it's not as bad. So I'm not necessarily opposed to the gaps that are here because when you close the tent, it does a pretty good job keeping the cool air out. There's also a gap here on the bottom. Now this gap, I actually, at first I wanted to get rid of when I first built this thing, but now I like it. And the reason is, even though cool air will go underneath, and when this tent is closed, the uh, sod cloth comes down to right about here. Cool air goes underneath. And so when it comes to carbon monoxide issues, this gives me peace of mind knowing that there's fresh air going in underneath. Now there are vents on the top of the tent, in the back and in the front, and those are, are useful as well, but I don't think they're as effective as having this cool air. Now, I mean, when it's minus 40, you can really feel that. The floor stays very cold. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna seal up the gap here and the gap here. And there was a, uh, a person who commented two or three videos ago um, and said it's, uh, it's a trick that she, she learned. And uh, I, I can't remember her name, but anyway, I'm doing it. Perfect. What do you think? I think it's good. I really like it. A simple idea that I got from, from one of you. And uh, I'm just so appreciative. I really am. I would never have thought of this. So yeah, keep those ideas coming. So I think it's safe to say that I've got the squeakiest door in Canada. Listen to this. What I'm going to do, yeah it's pretty hot, I'm going to drop a little bit of canola in here. The worst that will happen is it will smoke and if it catches on fire, well, let's see if that's enough. Yes, just a little bit. Look at that. A little bit more. Now that I've got my drill here, I'm going to put up a bunch of hooks. Because I'm realizing how you can't have enough hooks. You know how to screw them in.
Okay, I've decided, even though that's nice and smoky, I have the tent door open, that I am going to cook in here. Good afternoon snack here. these these rotten pieces you throw that in the fire and it just goes they're really dry here in the end Let's see if I can split this huh. it's on a weird angle <laughs> if I can get it there we go You see, look how nice that is, eh? This tree right here is a big, beautiful, dead standing tree. And I, I'm going to cut it down with my silky saw and see how that goes. And I just went into the woods and found it. Actually, I found two or three really good dead standing trees. So I'm putting myself to work. I think this guy is worth it. It's got a ton of branches up top, but that's the, that's the stuff that I love to use now to start my wood stove. So I mean, that's what I'm here for. It's to work. For around here, this is pretty darn big. Now, my issue is I want to drop it right here. Like it's got to be pretty darn particular because I do have trees in the way here. One tree that I could actually cut down first might be smart to do it. I just feel like with the weight of this tree, because it's so big, it's not going to have an issue coming down through. And if it gets caught up, I can walk it this way to get out. So the silky saw is a great little saw. Oh, this wood is so beautiful. The other day I noticed it wasn't working well for me at all, and I switched over to using the bow saw. The reality is, this saw was, was loose. So I just tightened it with my Leatherman, my trusty Leatherman. And now I'm gonna cut this thing on an angle so it's going this way and hopefully the saw doesn't give me too much heartache. I'm gonna cut it pretty high. Normally I wouldn't. And then in the winter time I'll come in here and I'll cut it down to uh, less than 12 inches. I feel like I'm <laughs> stepping up to bat here.
I'm gonna need this to be a lot smaller to carry it over to the tent. I figure if I cut it into two or three pieces, it'll be manageable. And then maybe even tonight, I'll start to uh, cut up some of this wood. It's, you know, like around here, getting one good tree <laughs> means a lot because there are so many like rotten, which I like to burn, and tiny sticks. So getting something that's this valuable. This is a this is a couple of days of wood just in that effort right there. Can I do it? No. 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 Oh, it won't work. There we go. Now before I go work on that tree, I'm going to get this fire pit going. All that rotten birch there, that will burn eventually. Look at that. <laughs> like why does birch do this? And yet spruce will last like crazy. But birch is hardwood and birch burns hotter and longer and spruce isn't the greatest for burning, but spruce yet it's stronger out in the wild. It doesn't rot the same way. Oh. Sometimes I can spark these branches just with a match. What I think I'll do, so that's the top of the tree that you just saw me bring over. Dry, 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 dry. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Sometimes I can just catch this stuff just with a match. Ooh, it's dark now. Night's coming fast this time of year. I love it. There's something cozy about the dark in the fall. I don't know what it is. Anyway, that fire outside is nice and I'm gonna bring out the grill here soon. I'm gonna make an all-time classic for me, pork chops and homemade fries. Can't go wrong with that, easy to make. And uh, I kind of want to make a little mesh thing to hang up high in the tent. So that way when I come in and I need to thaw out, I can just take stuff off and just put it up in like the little mesh net. I, I remember when I was a kid, I think there was one at the ski club growing up. 
And people would just like take off their hats and their gloves and th scarves or whatever, neck warmers, throw them up in the, in the uh, mesh net that would be sitting above the wood stove and everything would dry out pretty good. Um, so I kind of want to figure that out, but I don't know how to do it. But if I can like figure out how to like weave a mesh, I've got some rope. That could be a cool little project tonight. This looks so good. Look how juicy that is. Pork is the best because it just, if it's fatty, it's just so juicy. These fries are perfect. I'm gonna take some extra grease with these. Oh yeah. So what I do is take that grease and pour it right in that fire because I'm not going to use it again. I'm not going to keep it stored in a bag overnight near my camp because I'm sure that smells delicious. Okay, flame broiled. Look, wow. Now, I'm going to take this, I'm going to pour it right into the fire. This little stick can hold this, and I can just dump it like that. But it's gonna come up. There we go. How incredible does that look? Oh, I'm gonna save half of it for my beans in the morning. This is one of those things where I don't know what I'm doing. Essentially, I'm making it up as I go along. The hooks, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna hang some string from the hooks, and then I'm gonna have the, um, use this side wall area here, part of the frame, to uh, make the mesh. <laughs>
I might just hang this rope here, do the same on the other side, and then just tie some rope, weave it. I actually might have something here. <laughs> this might actually be working out. Okay, that's pretty good. This should stabilize things. Just adding one more little piece here to give it a little bit more of a net feel. That's pretty tight. Just imagine, I come in, it's super cold, everything needs to dry, I just throw it up there, and it's good. Just like that. So this is literally just me making it up and just figuring it out my first effort failed yeah i'm happy with it i might put another couple um of pieces of rope going lengthwise yeah okay folks that's it for me i'm gonna go to bed it's 10 o'clock and uh it's a beautiful night it's really dark out there, lots of clouds, so there's no northern lights tonight, but uh, there's also no wind, so it's just really beautiful and calm, so it's going to be probably a pretty solid sleep, and uh, looking forward to tomorrow and another amazing day. Well, good morning. It's a beautiful morning. That fire is so nice. What a way to start a day. Just to have a fire going and just to open it up and hear it just take off like that. It's a beautiful sound. That stove did a tremendous job last night. It really did. I loaded the stove before I went to sleep at around 12 30 1 o'clock at night and I turned it all the way down and that thing simmered to a bed of coals like a champion it really did I woke up this morning at 8 opened up the door and there was still so much left 
it just cooked perfectly. I threw in three other little pieces of wood just to give it a little bit of, just, just to freshen it up, you know? And uh, wow, very good. Minus 40, I'm gonna have to open it up quite a bit throughout the night to have the air sucking through and to have that fire burning a bit hotter. But uh, this time of year, when it's like zero degrees Celsius outside, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, having that stove just closed off allows for a temperature of about 20 degrees throughout the whole entire night um, Celsius in, uh, in the tent. And that's perfect. That's perfect sleeping. I have the window open in the back all the time. A little bit of fresh air comes down. This is this time of year. Fall camping is almost as good as deep freeze camping for me at this point right now. I don't know if it's because it's fresh and it's a new thing for me, but once I'm out here, I'm in love. I really am. The only thing is, it's a you know, it's a, an hour and a half through the woods and and uh, on a canoe every single time here and back, here and back, and while I'm up for it, <laughs> sometimes you just want to get here quickly, so in the winter time, you know, when I jump on my snowmobile, I'm here in half the time from my house, so, you know, there's that advantage in the winter, but the advantage in the, in the fall is that it's just, I mean, I can go outside with this shirt on right now if I want, and yes, I will get cool after a while, but... If it was minus 45 outside, I wouldn't even consider it. Unless I was just running out to grab something and running back in. So yeah, what a lovely night. Also, my pillow system for the last three or four trips has been this hoodie folded up like that. Nice little pad. And then underneath of it, I've got my wool jacket and when you combine those it's not the greatest pillow in the world but do that and then you do that and then you lay your head on it it's pretty good
So I'm gonna go with a little fancy fire start up right now using my knife and uh, my fire pod. I love these things. So this right here, if you're new to my channel, it's just a bit of egg carton that holds some wax and some lint. You uh, pour the wax into the, into the egg carton, you put lint in, and you cut it all out. You get little pods. And they, they start really nicely. Let's see. Oh, does he want to go? Now he does. Now these things will burn a long time. I'm going to cook breakfast out here today. Okay, let's see what's in the tickle trunk. I think something's been in here. There's a lot of sawdust. Anyway, there's pads, which are good, and they're dry, and I'm gonna bring them over to the, to the fire. Just an old tarp. A bucket with a hole in it. That's interesting. Maybe it's meant to go with the toilet seat. Wonder if that would work. I think it would work. Uh. Not much. That toilet seat is a luxury out here. A really old pail, maybe for water. Five sixty eight Canadian Forest. Okay, this is a rocking chair. Oh. Yeah, that's good. A little bit low. But lots of heat coming off of this, that's for sure. Anyway, this site is something else. And I am, it's mine. It's, it's my site. I've got two sites right now. And uh, this one is the one I really want to develop at some point. This winter I'm planning on coming out here and doing a bunch of work. I know uh, quite a few of you watched the first video when I came out here. And I'll put the, uh, I don't know where it goes, one of these. There's a link you can see when I first come out to explore this place. But uh, yeah, so the, the person who used to use this spot, uh, I know her and uh, she's done with it. So I bought the tent and um, bought the stove and and everything that's around here off of her that uh, you know she's accumulated over the years. There's been a couple of owners at this location and this spot has this tent's been here for 
probably almost it's been here a decade so my plan is to well I I'm gonna tear down the whole tent and everything that's in there is just going a lot of it's going to the dump some of it's going back to the previous owner I'll take care of that this winter that'll be a big project flattening this place out I don't know what I'm gonna do with that platform either there's mice there's mice here for sure mice droppings all throughout the tent it's a bit dilapidated in there so there's work I have to do there's a lot of work I have to do to make it nice and livable Got to get used to the rocking chair. Let's see. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna put this fire out. I'm gonna go back over to my tent. And then I'm gonna shut that tent down. And I'm gonna go home. And it's gonna be likely, unless something miraculous happens, in all likelihood, this is the last one around here for maybe about a month. So it's been a good run the last, uh, the last couple of weeks out here. If, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, then uh, yeah, subscribe, hit like, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, by the way, at Jay in the Woods. So if you wanna see some of my photos of my adventures out here, you can see them there. And yeah, that's it. Another blast, amazing. Just an amazing time. I'm living the dream out here, so I'm just so happy that some of you want to come along. And uh, thanks for all the comments. Keep commenting. You got ideas and tips and just you want to say hi? Comment section. I'll say hi back. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys really soon. Yeah.